It's a Chinese spacewalk. A bubble rises in the pool. It's complete fraud. Here the helmet gets hit on the International Space Station and a bubble rises <laughs> into the pool. Tossing some bullshit and a bubble appears at 3.39 in this video. And it takes an odd trajectory because it's in a water pool. Houston, we have a problem. Space is broken. Sorry, U.S. government. I uh, have to show them the bubble. There's the bubble in the pool that we just saw. Yep, doesn't even go in a straight line. It's in a water pool. Takes a very odd trajectory. Because the water is actually moving around. It's not still. You can catch these a lot in NASA videos, and the fact that these appear on camera means there's more bubbles that you're not seeing. The training for spacewalks are done in water tanks, and the actual spacewalks are fake. They're done in water tanks. And uh, here on the International Space Station, they once even got caught with a scuba tank in space. Which is the faking of spacewalks in a swimming pool. In this vid, you catch a glimpse of someone wearing a scuba tank. Scuba tanks in space? NASA does literally nothing in space. It's all bullshit. The video is sped up, so it looks more natural. But yeah, they're underwater. And the video is sped up. And they do this on the Hubble Space Telescope as well. So that's how you know the Hubble Space Telescope never existed in orbit. This is all bullshit. Installing a corrective optics package known as CoStar, Hubble was now poised to make some of the most groundbreaking astronomical observations in history. I need somebody to sing the Little Mermaid song, Under the Sea. <laughs> They're in a water tank. It's from a distance, can you tell? What's with all this atmospheric bullshit? What kind of camera is this? Do they make it look like they're underwater on purpose? They have two water tanks. They have the water tank that they train in, and then they have this water tank for the fraud. They never work in space. The International Space Station is complete bullshit. Gecko grippers moving on up. A piece of tape can only be used a few times before the adhesion wears off and it can no longer hold two surfaces together. But researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California are working on the ultimate system of stickiness. You can read the Jesuit story here at NASA.Freemason Government. Got some fake science pictures, lovely. I put, space is really cold and really hot, says the astronaut. So why isn't temperature an issue? It's all trickery. One of the things we do outside is just like inside repairs. We have a lot of um, electric... Did you hear that sound? A lot of things just clunked together at the same time. And she even dipped. And that's because they couldn't keep the plane steady in its dive. That's why that happened. She is not in an authentic zero-g environment on an international space station because this is all bullshit. We have a lot of oh. um, electrical boxes you okay there? And <laughs> the <solar laughs> Medusa? Is in fact, it's also 25 minutes long. No Her hair the entire so time will be in that shape. It will never change. So no matter what her hair hits or she lays down or she flies around. The hair is supposed to be moving through air, and yet it keeps bringing back into that position. They have to maintain continuity, just like in the Hollywood films. They're not always on the zero-g planes, and if they're going to fool you, her hair has to be fixed like that. So sometimes if she's wearing a harness, or she's just taking regular pictures, then you will not know the difference. It will all look the same. And sometimes they don't work quite right. Um, remember, space is really cold and really hot. She said it herself, really space is really cold and really hot. Sometimes the things on the outside don't work quite right, and they have to go out and do a spacewalk. So temperature is affecting...
the outside of the International Space Station. And these magical spacesuits protect them from those extreme temperatures. She said it herself. She's an astronaut. She went up. She wants us to remember that space is really cold and really hot. So not only is she telling us that, she wants us to remember that. So why don't you do science for yourself and investigate NASA? Because they want you to remember some basic facts. And some of their Hollywood shit doesn't make sense. So why don't you do what NASA has told you to do and do fucking science? They want to be exposed. Anyway, have a look at the end of this. And there's a strange motion to the Santa. Take a look at the way it moves. It kind of skips out of control, out of her control a couple of times. First it dips down and then up a little bit. And then at the end it goes up a little bit. And she kind of looks a bit embarrassed, like she's been caught putting her hands in the cookie jar. Oops, I hope you didn't see that. No, we didn't see, Katie. Just keep the beautiful smile on your face and that'll distract us from the hoax. Have a look at her hair. There's something odd about her hair. I know this is zero gravity and hair is supposed to stick out and go all over the place, but her hair doesn't really flop around naturally. It's always sticking out kind of rigidly. Maybe they permed it in that position, or perhaps they're hanging her upside down. As she shakes her head from side to side slightly, you can see the hair always springs back to a particular position with respect to her head. It should flop all over the place. There's supposed to be a woman in space. Her hair is short. Did NASA get scared? Because the women with long hair have helped wake up the public. So from now on, are the women going to have short hair? In real life, think about women in the military and how they shave their heads. In real life, an International Space Station, if you can only take sponge baths, women on their own would probably shave their heads. And if they didn't want to do that, they would probably be instructed to shave their heads. You would not go to space with this giant, crazy hair that these female astronauts have shown. Can you not see what's wrong with this picture? Ladies with long hair, how many times in your life does your hair go into your face? Why doesn't that ever happen with the female astronauts on the International Space Station? Her hair will never go into her face because it's fixed. It will always spring back into that position. Um, bags before they get too far away. One of them is Where are the feminists? The other Why aren't women demanding that we send the first female astronaut to the moon? Men did it six times in four years. Man got to plant a flag on the moon six different times in just a four year period. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Who cleans the International Space Station? They put their dirty socks and dirty feet over everything. Who is scrubbing the International Space Station? Where is the housekeeper? Everybody should get involved because this is incredibly ridiculous. All you have to do is investigate NASA for yourself. This house of cards of lies needs to come crashing down. So that people can start questioning what they're told. Here's I Justine. She has a vlog. Her hair flows in the air as it would because the hair is moving through air. So it's going to flow as you bounce around. And on the International Space Station, this does not happen with the women. They do flips. They lay down. They do all kinds of things. They bounce from here to there. They pretend they're Superman. Their hair will never look like that. The heart of the space station, really, this is the service mall module. This is the central post. In case we had any problems, I know one, a couple of the questions were about what type of things do you have to worry about. And some of the things we have to worry about in space are fire. If we had a fire, if we had a depressurization, like we were hit by a micrometeorite and it made a hole. So we gather here as a group of three or six and then figure out how we're going to either fight the fire, patch the hole, or solve the uh, the toxic spill and what's cool about this module of course it's the central post it also has uh, great windows right down toward earth it has uh, controls to fly in uh, visiting space no at the probka for our ride home 
it's a little bit squishy, but everybody asks, how do you sit in the Soyuz? And you sort of sit in your seat like this. Everybody has a handmade seat for them, sorts of survival gear, uh, with us, keeping us safe in here. So they've pretty much thought of everything. And uh, we'll be home on the planet within the next 12 hours. Pretty shocking. <laughs> They're medical experiments. P in a tube. We're trying to understand what's happening to our bodies up here, especially with respect to bone loss and things like that. And so, actually, what we'll do is when we go to the bathroom, we'll actually collect samples, which is easier to do than you might think. Easier to do than you might think. What do we think? Let's talk about that for a minute. They use the bathroom and they collect the urine into those tubes. And it's easier than you might think. How is this done exactly? So, you can hear jet engines in this video too because she's on a plane. Number two, right here. This is the bathroom. I'll show you. you sit on that little tube with your butt cheeks and you take a crap. It apparently has suction. Make sure things get let go the right direction. Do you notice how clean this is? Do they clean the inside of that tube? Apparently the suction is so strong that crap doesn't touch the sides of this thing. Because there's not really a seat for this, when this thing is sucking the crap out of your anus, does it pull you down? Are you stuck? Now she has to pretend that this is real, so she's going to pretend that it stinks, even though she's putting her hands all over it. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. Yeah, close that thing up because it smells like shit. Now she's going to show you a separate funnel that they use for urinating. And it's the same for both guys and girls. And she also says you can go n number one and number two at the same time. So you can press this funnel against your vagina while you're sitting on this fake crapper. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's, of course, for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So there's sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. So you can do number one and number two, even if you're a female, because she would know because she's a female. And she hangs on while the suction <laughs> is pulling her crap out of her anus and she presses that funnel against her vagina. And apparently that has suction too. Now if you're a guy, is the suction so strong that you just point your penis at it and hopefully the urine goes flying into the right direction into the air that's being funneled into that thing? Or do you put your penis inside of that funnel and you touch the yellow part? Well, that, that might hurt. And what if you're a woman? That gets pressed against your vagina and it sucks on your vagina <laughs> while you urinate, right? And this is both the same for guys and girls. Do they clean this thing afterwards? I just bring it up because she says these urine collection experiments are done easier than we might think. Well, what exactly do we think? We're not told how they do these things. So are we wrong in what we might think? How is urine collected into these little tubes, especially if you're a woman? Do they have a funnel that you pee in that's separate than the one that's in the bathroom? Do you press that against your vagina? Does it collect the urine that way? It pulls air and urine into a compartment and then it separates this air and urine and it puts the urine into these little tubes and it's easier than we might think. Does each woman get a different funnel for her vagina? Is it different for guys? They're worried about bone loss because they're in zero G and they have to maintain their heart rate and have to constantly work out even though they can't shower and they only take sponge baths. But how does the funnel against the vagina work? Because you know, if you're a woman and you're using the restroom, you might have to wipe front to back. I know there's some women that spread the lips and they're pretty skilled at peeing into the toilet, standing up. That's a skill that some women have. It's pretty funny. They could be in the restroom standing and their feet are pointing in a different way. And women could be freaked out like, what in the fuck? Is that a transgender? But yeah. Don't, doesn't the funnel have to go against the vagina? How are you peeing into that funnel and why is it universal? Why is it unisex? How are you collecting these urine samples? Why is your hair permed? 
Do they shave their legs? They don't have to shave their legs. Why would you go to outer space with a full set of hair when you can't shower properly? How many times a day are you taking sponge baths since you constantly have to work out to maintain your heart rate? See, we have a lot of questions, but we can't get the answers from NASA because they will not answer the public's questions. Way faster. NASA is Mickey Mouse bullshit. Bullets. All of a sudden I look and see the solar panel just instant hole this big. This is quiet. Instant hole that big in a solar panel. <laughs> and nobody dies in these spacewalks. So dangerous to send out missions, they can take out a spacecraft. And cosmic rays punching through our brains. Yeah, what about that fucking radiation? I thought space has deadly radiation. Why are the spacesuits so magical? What can if you wore a spacesuit, can you go into a volcano? They are a bullet traveling at an enormous speed. Yeah, you can't even fathom how fast this stuff is going. It could be smaller than a grain of sand. If it hits you, you're dead. It's just that simple. Genius plan. I mean they talk about micrometeorites and they talk about space debris. Space debris has to be traveling at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour, otherwise it starts accelerating towards the earth. And they tell you that they have to go get space debris because it's such a danger. Doesn't matter what size the space debris is, if it hits you, you're dead. Don't let the forest leave you. To keep astronauts safe. But will they work? And if astronauts do make it to Mars, what will they wear? Humans can't survive. Look at that. Pressure on they showed you some fake Apollo footage from the moon. They have no shame. The Apollo missions are ridiculous. They want you to believe we went to the moon six times in four years. They sent man to the moon nine times and out of those nine times they landed on the moon and planted six different flags in a four-year period. Can you just think about that for a second? Imagine from today to four years from now if we went to the moon and planted six flags. That's what they want you to believe that they did with 60s technology. It's been over 40 years where they don't go back. Why not send the first female astronaut to the moon if it's so safe to go to the moon and come back? We were in a space race with Russia. <laughs> the countries are working together and they're lying to their own people. Our leaders get installed. Learn about Freemasons and learn of the Jesuit order. There's tremendous fraud in science. And our rights are being destroyed. That's why you need to care. Basically, the gas in your lungs would boil. You would be dead very quickly. They are a bullet traveling at an enormous speed. This is not an actual documentary about anything. Kind of radiation. It's fiction. NASA does nothing in space. You can find this out just by simply looking for pictures of the Earth from space. We would have thousands by now of genuine photography. Since the satellites are supposed to be so far away from the planet in geostationary orbit. NASA's channel always says live now as if they're actually fucking doing something. It's a joke. Where do they take sponge baths? There is no special area for all of these people to be taking sponge baths. What happens if both toilets break on the International Space Station? If sound can't travel in a vacuum, how do you propel yourself in space? <laughs> Rockets push off of the atmosphere and outer space is a completely different environment. It's supposed to be a vacuum. How do you propel yourself with chemical propellant? If electric propellant works in space with solar panels and it's old technology, why can't you show satellite technology in a vacuum here on Earth? Put something on a string and let it whiz around in a circle so we can see this actually working, so we can believe it. As a matter of fact, that would exist anyways because you would have to test this stuff since satellites are supposed to be evolving from the size of school buses all the way down to CubeSat satellites. And we don't have those videos. Oh, isn't that funny? You don't have to test your science. And in Yahoo News... The cartoon bullshit just continues. They talk about how they're thinking about having a rover that can go into extraterrestrial oceans. So we'll be able to see maybe the Earth's ocean in NASA videos in the future. We'll be looking forward to that.
Elon Musk says SpaceX's most powerful rocket yet could transport a manned crew to this very important moon of Jupiter. Oh, so not only can we go to Mars, we can go to Jupiter. We could go everywhere. <laughs> we could even leave the galaxy, probably. They always talk about the Hubble Space Telescope all day long. They're breathtaking views of space. All you have to do is look up the bubbles in the water and fake spacewalks, because spacewalks are fake, and that's how you know this thing doesn't exist. They made this image for the public. has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. The Hubble Space Telescope does not exist. This is bullshit. And in other news, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is a theoretical physics genius, but the mystery he finds most intriguing is women. Yes, he can tell you all about the Big Bang and multiverses and string theory, but when it comes to people on the planet, he has no idea how the fuck they work. So I'm supposed to believe that Stephen Hawking knows all about this and can't tell that it's bullshit and that there's science fraud but he knows nothing about women. They're so intriguing. But he'll tell you that this is real all day long. NASA Mars rover finds clear evidence for ancient long-lived lakes. They filmed that on Earth. They say it's Mars. People can't figure it out. Well, here's one of the fucking articles. The new biggest thing in the universe and why it's a headache for scientists. There's a bunch of copied and pasted stars into a fucking image and people think it's great. The biggest thing in the universe sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, if you're a sheeple, it might. Well, not exactly. We all love a good cosmological superlative, the hottest, the brightest, the most massive. But studying space is rarely that simple. In many cases, the most of the universe bend our theoretical properties of physics in ways we don't quite understand. And our scientists and astronomers are constantly stunned at Space.com. A group of international scientists have recently discovered something that's vying for the title of the biggest thing in the observable universe. A clusterfuck of rings and galaxies located about 7 billion light years away. But the ring detailed in the latest monthly notice of the Royal Astronomy Society is so big that some cosmologists are saying it violates the basic theoretical principles governing the universe. Doesn't quite make fucking sense what we're trying to say. NASA estimates one billion Earths in our galaxy alone. There's got to be a lot of fucking aliens looking at the sheeple saying, holy fuck, those motherfuckers are slaves. The proposed cluster is invisible from Earth because it's so fucking far away. It was just revealed to cosmologists after they observed a nine gamma ray burst. That's how we found it. Which are the result of supermassive stars collapsing into black holes in your head. The bursts offer brief clues about the location of other galaxies. In this case, the bursts are so close together and similar to one another that scientists think they must be a single feature. The team said there's a very low chance, 1 in 20,000, that the arrangement appeared by random chance. Here's a pretty picture of some bullshit you can look at and be surprised with your billions of dollars. Thank you for sending us that money, guys. This discovery is the latest addition to a mix of galaxy clusters referred to as galaxy filaments. It's great walls and massive threads that close the vast voids of space. These features are so inconveniently large as... In inconceivably large as scientists don't know how the fuck is going on. They're losing their minds, guys. Send us some more billions of dollars. If you were to travel from one end of the new cluster at the speed of light, it would take more than 5.76 billion years. Contributor to the Lost Springs Discovery, Professor Lawrence Cock of the Observatory in Budapest, said that if we could see the feature in the night sky, it would be 70 times bigger than the moon. That's pretty fucking big. Did you know that Earth is six times bigger than the moon? But the ring has stiff competition for the title of biggest team of scientists found another enormous cluster back in 2013. The temperature of galaxies estimated to be somewhere around 10 billion light years across. This ring is based on a distinct observation that the first cluster is beyond a humorous over desperate bird, said some fucking guy. Astrophysicist, holy shit, we got a name? John Hakila. 
an astrophysicist professor at the College of Charleston who contributed to the discoveries, both the giant ring and the Great Wall. He thinks the Great Wall will end up taking the throne, but added there's still a lot of research to be done because the wall doesn't have a strong, distinct boundary. Regardless, both of these features are problematic because they might contradict what is known as a cosmology principle. And that can't fucking happen because the laws of physics don't bend, guys. They don't fucking bend. To understand this principle, consider sand on a beach. If you look at a small sections of the sand, there might be points that stick out. Maybe a small pebble here or an abnormally large mound there. But when observed at a larger scale, the sand looks relatively uniform. That's theoretically the same way the space works. There's no special place in the universe. No center. No edge. No area with a star cluster more than another place. Each region is governed by the same physical laws of nature. We're supposed to be living in a truly random universe. And these scientists that are constantly stunned on space.com are fucking up our theories. If you want a mind-blowing illustration of what this looks like, look at this 3D map of Sloan Digital Sky Survey. It's fucking amazing, and it's from NASA. Your taxpayer dollars paid for this shit. The cosmological principle has been a bedrock concept for scientists studying stars over the past couple of centuries because unlike many other fields of science, there isn't much opportunity for experimentation. Wah, wah, wah. There's only one sky and one set of stars to work with. These massive galaxy filaments breaks the rules, though. They are way too big to obey the physical laws of gravity. And it pisses us off because we don't understand why we got to write fake articles in the first place, but we like our paychecks, which have previously limited the size of cosmological features to, at most, 1.2 billion light years. So do these... Massive discoveries put the basic tenets of cosmology in jeopardy? That's still up for debate. In 2013, Robert Close of the University of Central Lanchester discovered what he said was a quasar group about 4 billion light years across. And we were like, what the fuck? That makes no sense. You can't write that. You cannot write that, guys. The sheeple will not buy it. They wrote it anyways, the sheeple bought it. First feature was too big to exist under physical law, but the feature called the huge large quasar group fell under intense scrutiny when researchers started to question the statistical validity of its existence. They argued that his group of galaxies was the result of randomness, not due to actual physical properties pulling them together, you fucking idiot. Come on now, this shit has got to make some kind of remote sense, the sheeple might buy it. Here's what our galaxy looks like from the outside. Here's a pretty picture of some bullshit you click on. People say, well, did you find them <laughs> because you were looking for them? Heck, Layla said, a lot of these cosmologists are hoping that this is just going to go away and they'll have to look at it again. They want to see some pretty pictures from NASA, not some bullshit they got to try to explain. So far, Balaz says his team discovery has received a somewhat icy response from their fellow cosmologists. The first reaction is that they don't believe it, Bala said. Some people believe that it's only some statistical something. <laughs> Bala's argued that the staggering size of the ring cluster may end up not contradicting the principles of science. Instead, he said it could unlock clues to the mystery of star formation, helping us with a much broader question from the evolution of the universe. There's always some wiggle room, like Leo said. Scientists always have some add some balls and whistles to the observation. It's not like cosmology will be overthrown. <laughs> Who's going to be overthrowing the cosmology? The fucking sheeple? They're watching Honey Boo Boo Child. We get to write whatever the fuck we want. Let the debate continue and then billions of dollars flow. On to another article for Pluto Truthers. The New Horizons mission is only the latest lie. Continuing a long tradition of space program conspiracy theories, Pluto truthers claim that NASA is faking it. 
Ah, oh, you've hit your limit of five free articles this month. Try our subscription options. Yep, fake news is big business, people. Oh, here's another article. Why NASA scientists are excited about Mad Damon into Martian movie. Mad Damon is thinking, man, you motherfuckers are so fucking evil. But goddamn, I love fucking money. Fearing the wrath of his nerdy online followers, Matt Damon has nerdy online followers? Are these the same people that can't figure out that NASA's complete bullshit? How much of a fucking nerd are you if you can't even figure out NASA's bullshit? You're fucking smart? You think you're a nerd? You love NASA? You can't even figure out that NASA's bullshit? You believe that NASA went to the moon six times in four years between 1969 and 1972 with 60 technology? And the only reason why they don't go back is because they don't fucking feel like it? And you think you're smart? You fucking kidding me? You guys are killing me! You're killing me, Smalls! Fuck the news, it's all fake bullshit. They drive me nuts. Today on the International Space Station, however, the urine on this fucking thing gets recycled into drinking water through a filtration system. Here they are, the Expedition 19 crew, and they participate in a toast about the International Space Station drinking piss water. Of course, the jokes keep rolling in. But some scientists propose that human waste could line the walls of future spacecraft to act like radiation shields, protecting astronauts from the harmful effects of cosmic rays. Hey, I got an idea, NASA. You don't even have to pay me for this one. Why not shove a funnel up the astronauts' asses in the new spacesuits, and you can line the spacesuits with their shit to protect them from the radiation. And then the spacesuits don't have to be so magical anymore because they're supposed to protect you from extreme temperatures like hot and cold because the astronauts say space is really hot and really fucking cold. So yeah, make them shit suits. That's what they are anyway. I mentioned the Hubble Space Telescope. What exactly are you being told about space? Here is space debris, and they say that they have to go clean it up. And they made Debris Draw 1 to go help clean this up. And it has a claw, and it goes after space junk. And as you get away from the surface area of the Earth, you're covering more and more area. So the further away you get from the Earth, at some point, it's like you're covering two Earths. I mean, that's how much surface area you could eventually be covering. And they're pretending that they have to go get the space debris. And then they also pretend that it travels in all the same trajectory. And this thing just scoops everything up. And then it has a claw that can grab big pieces of space debris, and then little pieces of space debris get caught in the sides by panels. Of course, there's no in-between. Uh, do they catch the middle-sized pieces of space debris with the box? And then Debris Drone 1 does not send the package down to Earth to get incinerated. No, the whole thing goes down to Earth to become incinerated, and it's fucking useless. So because they say there's over 500,000 pieces of space debris, they have to send thousands of space debris drone ones. But the important thing about this is the camera. They show you a camera on this satellite drone. So somebody is operating that claw and they're getting the space junk. Why can't you see the video from this camera? This thing has a camera. Wouldn't you like to see this thing in operation? There's the camera. It has little lights on it. It can be recorded. So you can have satellites with cameras in space. You should research satellites. You'll always get a different number of how many satellites are supposed to exist. You will hear approximately 1,500, approximately 3,000, approximately 5,000. You will see people that apparently have sources and links, and they will say that there's 6,000, 9,000, and this number will continue to go up higher and higher. The number that you'll probably be believing of satellites existing is the number 13,000 and if you keep going for more and more sources you're gonna get numbers up to 20,000 satellites that are in operation and they're supposed to exist in geostationary orbit as well that's so far away from the earth you see this image of earth this is cropped that's how far away this satellite is from the planet this is supposed to be real video of earth from space they show this on television to the public on the dish network it's supposed to be coming from a satellite and so the point is, you can have cameras in space. They tell you that you can. In the Apollo missions, the famous Apollo 17 picture of Earth from space, 
That was taken with a Hasselblad camera using film from behind glass. One of the astronauts took those famous pictures that are over 40 years old that you see all of the time. So you can have cameras in space, apparently. Here is the Apollo 17 picture of Earth from space. And this is very important because you're shown this your entire life and it's in every single science book. And even though this is over 40 years old, they still show this in the news to represent Earth. They'll be talking about space or the Earth or whatever, and they will insert this image into the news article. They're not even talking about Apollo 17. You see this image all the time, and they still use it. They use it on the covers of science books. This is printed literally all over the world in every single science book, even though it's getting incredibly dated. In 2022, it's going to become 50 years since the Apollo missions. This picture will continue to be printed all of the time. You see this image of Earth? This comes from a computer model. This is from a model that's on a computer of the Earth. And the clouds, the formations of the clouds are exactly the same. And this is very, very important. And I'll tell you why. Well, here is the computer model. The clouds are exactly the same, and you will see images from this computer model all of the time. You should really memorize the cloud configurations on this model because you're going to be seeing pictures from this model your entire life over and over again. See, the Apollo missions are extremely dated, but they made this, and now you will see this literally your entire life to go along with the Apollo missions. See that swirl of clouds? You should memorize that. Here's a beautiful detailed image from that model. You can see that huge swirl of clouds between Australia and Africa. And there it is on the model. And the crazy thing about this is when you type Earth from space in the image search, Earth from space, not NASA composite computer model of the Earth. Literally, Earth from space, which means you want to see pictures of the Earth from space in the image search, these images will come up over and over and over again. And the sick thing is they show this model in documentaries about space. They show this to you. The same model with the same clouds. They don't even change it. Here's the front, apparently. Do you recognize that? You literally see this all the time. Here's a picture of Jupiter and the Earth. It's not a real picture, it's an illustration, but see, it's the Apollo 17 image of Earth. It's over 40 years old, and they still use it for illustrations in modern times. Here's another image that somebody put together, and they used the Apollo 17 image of Earth from space, which you've been seeing literally your entire life over and over and over again, and your kids, as they go to school, they see this image in their science books. There it is used again. In modern times, it's over 40 years old gonna be 50 years old soon this is something that could have existed over 30 years ago if satellites are supposed to be past low earth orbit why are they showing you Apollo 17 over and over and over again they're not even talking about Apollo 17 Apollo 17 has nothing to do with this bullshit that's trying to educate you the answer may surprise you yeah there's Apollo 17 again if you type Earth from space in the image search, you'll see this image over and over and over again. But you've already been seeing it your entire life. You've probably seen that image of Earth over a thousand times in your life. See, people are brainwashed. They have this imaginary, just this crazy delusion that there's hundreds of pictures of Earth from space because of what they watch on television with computer generated images. You know, you go to the movies, you see Earth, and you have this idea that all of these pictures of Earth must exist. So when I say there's no pictures of Earth from space, people think I'm fucking nuts. Show me the pictures of Earth from space. They don't exist. Look at this. Earth's rotation on its axis. Apollo 17, Apollo 17, Apollo 17, Apollo 17. This is not only the most overused image in NASA history. This is the most overused image of all time in all of human history all over the world it goes on and on and on and on and the sad fact is that there's supposed to be billions of people on this planet and they don't have a problem with this they cannot figure out that there might be something wrong 
Now there's NASA's composite that I showed you. That's from a computer model. It's not even supposed to be a real picture of the Earth from space. The Apollo 17 image of Earth from space is supposed to be real. That's why they use it all the time. But it's extremely dated, and now they have this computer model, so they can start using this all the time. And it's not even supposed to be real. They don't pretend that it's real. They say it's from satellite data. That's how they helped to construct it. Now, what if NASA never made this composite computer model? Would the Apollo 17 image be in this picture? Probably Here, the composite computer model, <laughs> you're literally seeing this all the time. Here it is, used again, Earth, 8,000 miles. Now, if NASA had not made this computer-generated bullshit, would you be seeing the Apollo 17 image in this picture? Probably. I mean, you see it all the time in other pictures. Apollo 17, Apollo 17, Apollo 17. Nobody has a problem with it. It's crazy. Here's another image that somebody made. Now, why don't these people have any options? Why are they using NASA's computer-generated model of the Earth? Had NASA not made that, would they be using the Apollo 17 image of Earth from space? Very highly probable that they would be using that. Because they do that all the fucking time. This is another side of that composite computer model, which I showed you earlier. That's why you should memorize the cloud configuration so you can spot this shit from a mile away. But somebody used it because, what, they have no fucking choice? There's probably less than 350 pictures of Earth from space that are supposed to be real. And then you'll constantly see bullshit like this that is based on composite data from satellites that they had to make and stitch together. In modern times, you're looking at computer-generated bullshit. I mean, you got to really think about this. What if NASA did not make this composite computer model of the Earth? You would be seeing this shit over and over and over and over again. Apollo 17. How does that make any sense? <laughs> Isn't NASA doing work in the solar system? No, here's Apollo 17 shoved right up your ass all the time. You can't figure anything out. They even use this composite model that's not even supposed to be a real picture. They use it on the cover of Nova DVDs, which is supposed to be educational. They use it on the covers of science books. And could you imagine, had NASA not made this fucking thing, they'd be using Apollo 17. Because they always fucking use it anyway. Sometimes it's slightly modified, but the cloud configurations are exactly the same. Somebody slightly edited it. It's still the composite computer model. Look up Earth Day. Look up the campaigns for Earth Day. Look at how many times you see this fucking composite used. NASA is supposed to be doing work in the solar system. They show you pictures of moons and planets that are supposed to be real. Where are the pictures of Earth from space? Wake the fuck up. These satellites past low Earth orbit don't exist. These are your buddies. You get these over and over and over again. It's NASA's composite or Apollo 17. Pick your poison. They're both fucking fake. Apollo 17 is supposed to be real. It's not. The Apollo missions are bullshit. Is the world going to figure this out? Because I say NASA has less than 60 years. The 50th year anniversaries are coming up, and they're going to brainwash the hell out of you about our accomplishment of going to the moon. People are going to believe that we went to the moon six times in four years with 1960s technology, and then a decade went by where we didn't go back. But this isn't a decade we're talking about. This is the 50th year anniversaries in 2022 when it's going to be shoved up your ass so that you cannot think. You're going to see this on fucking magazines, news, all over the place because they don't want you figuring this out. So what about when it's been 100 years since the Apollo missions, where we went to the moon six times in just four years, and a hundred years passes by. Hey, <laughs> NASA is fucked. I don't care if they fake a Mars mission. They're not going to get away with this shit forever. This. You search images of Earth from space, you're going to see that image. I mean, why, why would you have fake images and computer-animated images of Earth 
when you can have the real thing. So basically, when you search Earth from space, you should see all real images of Earth from space. Like, why the f everybody thinks NASA does science? So why wouldn't you see that? From data from NASA's no, you get this, which orbits the Earth about every hundred minutes, taking measurements of light coming off the planet. That can be translated into ribbons of imagery like this. Ribbons of imagery. Why would you need to do that? Because there's supposed to be satellites past the Earth orbit. Why can't you just take a fucking picture? And then into one of these. And this is just the latest in NASA's Earth from Space. Gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then yeah, of course it has to be. To sort of simulate the atmosphere. Now, fuck and you. There are no pictures of Earth from space. <laughs> and this shows you that those GPS satellites do not exist. Because if those satellites existed, there would be pictures of the Earth from space. They would have the ability to do that. I, I wish I knew so which I of these images were real. <laughs> there is real astronomy that's done. What the fuck is it? It's not these Hubble images that were shown by fucking NASA. That's for goddamn sure. Tell me where this originated. Yeah, where the British fuck did that originate? Who was given an assignment to by I look at fifty thousand galaxies like a fucking in fucking robot month and classify whether they were boring ellipticals. Turn left whether here. Whether they were spirals that were edge on. You've reached your whether destination. Whether they were spiral galaxies that were rotating clockwise or they were rotating counterclockwise, because if we live in a truly random universe. You should find that of the clockwise. No, we've established that the scientists are always dumbfounded with new discoveries, which we we never given names of who these scientists are. But all of the time, like on space.com, you can be on space.com. Scientists are stunned and then fill in the blank. We have no, basically, we have no understanding of the universe because they're always fucking stunned about shit that's not supposed to exist that they find. So no, shut the fuck up. Fifty. You should be able to figure out, well, how many okay, galaxies get, are elliptical to how many years. It's fucking hour long. There has got to be some science in here. I'm not learning anything. ...of high energy particles. This project is out there for you to participate. <laughs> you know, those images and are probably bullshit. In the next few bullshit. weeks, we hope to be launching a Galaxy Zoo 2 website that will ask you to go out and make even more detailed classifications of stuff that is generally not always small red elliptical galaxies. Why We've increased the like probability, that? and now I am part of the project. So we raised say, by we robots? Like an um, orphan? We ask you to go out Does and Naza have robots? understand all the crazy shapes that galaxies come out in. Now, galaxies aren't the only thing that you can look at and understand better than just random person using a computer where Check the computer the is doing image all of the the earth. It's pretty awesome. A five-year-old can be trained to visually say clockwise versus anti-clockwise for a galaxy better than you can program a computer to do it. We're going to take this technology, take this idea, and build new citizen science gateways. She should have we're like still a track that you can listen to to fall Universe asleep zoo, to. Cosmic like zoo, having trouble to sleep. Discover. We don't know what we're going to name. Listen to Dr. Pamela Gay. But it is going to be. She talks about astronomy, and she will put to out your ass to sleep. We have built ties seconds. with the lunar reconnaissance orbiter to allow people to classify. Okay, the now of the we're moon in science fiction. And look at craters that have formed since the Apollo era. This is not even fucking science. And that's the history. It's not all what it's cracked up to be. Yeah, we had some fatalities. Test your mic. Astronauts in a fake shuttle How did they die? We don't know But we show it on television Test your mic NASA bullshit all fucking day What are we going to watch on TV? We don't have Nintendo systems At least we can go to the moon Mortal bullshit Houston, we have a problem and as the crowd watched, as this, nothing was in the sky, <laughs> they had to make their reactions because they knew that this had to explode. They did not have a point of reference as they were actually looking at nothing. Oh my god, my child died! And the child went in one direction and the bullshit in the other, and the parents smiled. They smiled. Did we film that? No, show the challenger. Are they still smiling? 
She stopped smiling. She got her shit together. Okay, show the crowd. Show, show the crowd. Come on, people are supposed to be watching this fucking thing. Who is not hitting the button? Show the fucking crowd. What if they start fucking up again? Get them all. It's good. Hurry up. Oh, you're fired. We need some new guys in NASA. Oh my god, we got the crowd. Whoa, my kid is like a million pieces and she's still flying. Dude. Did you see that? I don't know. Which way do we look? I hope I don't smile. I mean, I'm supposed to be looking at my dead kid. It was amazing. I mean, I was like... How long do I have to? I'm not an actress. I gotta stand here for five minutes and stare at the sky. My kid is supposed to be dead. How do I cry? Oh my God, she's meeting with the other dead astronauts. They're reuniting. Oh, my, maybe they'll be pieced back together and they can finish the mission. Speaking of that dumbass crowd, this is awesome channel you gotta check out. Jungle Surfer. He exposes so much fucking shit. He exposes so much that they had to make a bunch of channels to try to discredit this guy. <laughs> He's such a threat. Look at this shit. Our child died. What do we do now? Make more children? We're fucking old. to be the female astronaut on the show, John McCain and Lost Tower. Looking very upset now as they realize their child has been killed. Well, really, it doesn't look that much like they're really that worried. I mean, these little pouts they do. But in a minute here, Mr. John McCain, look alike, will start to uh, smile up again. Yeah, he has a little smirk. Hey, smile. Whoa, my daughter had a life and insurance right policy. Holy it shit, I'm going to be rich. The way they do this. It's so amateur. Bitch didn't you know, buy me Christmas presents for three years stand. in a row? Shit, I'll buy my own motherfucking Christmas presents. Controlled rent a crowd. And they're all there Damn, to play this is starting to look up. But what they're seeing is people. Do I still look up at this shit? It's kind of depressing. Poor job of it. Things are looking so up, but do I look down? We're being recorded? I guess I gotta look up. Fucking bitches still up there. <laughs> What are we going to do? Are we going to fucking make new kids? I don't even know. We're going to be rich. I, was, I like thinking about money. But yeah, we, we lost the fucking joy, job. Joy. I'm getting paid maybe a hundred bucks an hour just to stand here and pretend I'm crying. But I better have a bit of a laugh. Notice the stuff oh, on his lapel God, there. This whole thing air on television. It just shows you how bad this is. Look at this. Robbie Parker's dad. What's the kid looking at? Why should he look straight ahead? He's just lost his Wait, daughter. Wait, where's the shuttle supposed to be again? In the sky? He's laughing his head off about it. Happy joy, joy. Edward and Grace Corrigan. They're about three and a half miles away from me. Did the cameraman pull, <laughs> pull away like, why are they smiling? Fucking son motherfucker. The VIP wants everything. Dur, 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 dur. We don't know which way to look. Yeah, look at that shit. You don't see that every day. Okay, where are we going again? Oh my god, I'm still horrified. It's still blowing up. Don't you guys still see the bullshit flames? Oh my god, you're right. It's still blowing up. Holy shit. How much fuel do they put in that fucking thing? Well, as you notice, some people start to leave just like they leave a football game before it's over. Uh, Screaming out of there. But these ones are still looking up in the air. That's what I noticed. People keep looking up in the air, you know, wouldn't that have started to dissipate and be looking more on the horizon where it's crashed? It's still but blowing still up. Looking up for it's effect, blowing up so much, it's still going higher. Crying their eyes out. The newsman really got scared. He stopped recording the fucking thing. Really crying, are they? He's like, just fuck, this is <laughs> defies the physics. Acting. Are they still alive in there? It's just so clear to see. Anyone that thinks this is real, I'm sorry, you're living in Disneyland. Don't forget, there is a Disneyland in Florida. Oh my god, it is still blowing up like 100 times. How much fucking fuel is in that thing? Man, they, even their atoms are being blown to bits. They're fucking atoms. I got it on tape. My kids are going to love this shit. I got seagulls. And far too big an explosion. And it took a while, I'm sure, for it to sink in in the minds of of the parents and the school children. There you see Mr. and Mrs. Corrigan are still standing, saying a silent prayer. And it 
it took a while, I'm sure, for it to sink in the minds of, <laughs> of the parents and, uh, school children. Mr. And Mrs. Corrigan, still standing. The Challenger disaster. Yep, this is the disaster. We cannot hire proper actors for these hoaxes. What the fuck, America? Get your shit together. I'm gonna play a video from some stuff. You can find him easily on YouTube. Basically, if you look up the concave earth theory, you'll find him. Or if you look for people exposing NASA's bullshit, you'll see some of his videos. He does real science. <laughs> and he has this brilliant video about millions and billions and trillions. Oh my. Now I have a very small number. It's thousands. There should be thousands of pictures of Earth from space by now because satellites are supposed to be past low Earth orbit. And there's billions of sheep on the planet that can't figure out that very simple fact. But let's check out this Jesuit bullshit by Carl Sagan. Who's Carl Sagan? He's somebody that was on television all of the time before Neil deGrasse Tyson. So this is what your mother and father used to have to watch on fucking TV before the internet. Millions and billions and trillions. Oh fucking my. Roll the bullshit, Jesuits. This is supposed to be science, so don't laugh. Million, trillion, trillion, million, million, million. By the way, what picture is in every single science book? It's the Apollo 17 image of Earth from space. And guess what? You're going to see it in this fucking thing. A million, million, billion, four hundred billion suns. Billion, trillion, million, billion, trillions of orbiting snowballs. Billion, billion, billion. There it is. Apollo 17. You've been <laughs> shown this image your entire life. All over the world, in every single science book, this picture is printed. They still show it in news articles today. They're going to continue to show you this fucking image in the future. That is from Apollo 17. It's supposed to be Earth from space. And it's a fake fucking picture. And guess what? It's going to come up again. Trillions, million, 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 billion, 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 million, billion, billion, billion. billion, billion. Did you catch it? There it was again. It's imprinted in your fucking brain. You should spot it from a mile away. Million, million, billion, 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 million, 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 billion, million, 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 billion, billion, four billion year old tree. Tens of billions. I, uh... Forget millions, forget billions, forget trillions. There should be literally thousands of pictures of Earth from space because satellites are supposed to be past low Earth orbit. Have trillions. Get that million, through your million, fucking million, heads, billions, 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 billions of people. Billions, 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 trillion, millions, million, million, millions, million, billion, 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 billion. Are you seeing what's going on here yet? Science is corrupt. There's fraud in science. This is a big fucking deal. Turn off the television. Billions, 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 Hundreds of millions of years to evolve a bacterium. And All right, stop the bullshit. Learn about Freemasons and learn about the Jesuit order. You're being lied to every single day. Take your television and throw it the fuck out.